Hi guys, welcome to BRE. My name is Boston and today we're going to be reading The Sea by Leonard Engel. Today we're going to be reading page 6. We're go today we're going to be reading page 6. Sharks and Other Terrors of the Sea. On a warm day in May 1959, Albert Cope Glur and Shirley O'Nelly, both eighteen, both eighteen, and both students in San Francisco State College, decided to cool off with a swim in the Pacific, splashing into the surf at Baker's Beach near San Francisco's Golden Gate. They swim. They swam seaward some fifty foot some fifty yards cloak cobler in the in the lead. I heard him scream. Miss O'Neilly said later I I turned around and saw this bag, this big grey thing flap under the air. There is a thre there is a threshing in the water water. He screamed again. It's a shark. Get out of here. Looking down on the scene from the cliff top ramparts of the Presidio, Presidio the United States Army Post Master Sergeant Leo P. Leo P. Day watched the, watched the struggle with the shark I could see the boy in the foaming red water shouting and sing, signaling someone to go back, to go back, go back. Then I saw the girl swimming toward him, swimming toward him with fran frantic strokes, completely ignoring his warning. Miss O'Nelly reached for Kogler's hand, but she recalled when I pulled, I could see his arm was just hanging by, by a thread. So she put her arm about Kogler's back and started for shore. She dragged him close enough for nearby fishermen to throw away, to throw away line and pull them both t the rest both the rest of the way his body half drained of blood the young man died two and a half hours later from the teeth marks experts identified identified the at attacker as a great white shark for what sir was Sir Jean Day called the greatest exhibition exhibition of courage I have seen I have ever seen. President Kennedy awarded Miss O'Nelly was nineteen sixty one Young American Medal for Bravery. The full extent of the danger posed by sharks has been widely recognized only in recent decades a World War II training book which the United States Navy issued to men serving in shark fested areas said that the shark was not much of a menace to the men and the article article in a national magazine debunked the shark and portrayed it as a cow hardly cow hardly easy to scare off with a shout or a sweat on the snout. Both publications were in error among few among the few human eating sea animals including Barrick 
Barracuda and Moray eels sharks are the worst are the worst. Each year sharks kill or remain several dozen human beings in one place alone. The waters along Australia's east coast there have been more than two hundred shark attacks on humans in one hundred fifty years in nineteen fifty nine. Scientists reported thirty six unprovoked attacks around the world, thirteen of which results in death of the thirty six attacks then occurred in United States waters. Three of, three of these caused death. Sharks are such dangerous creatures because in, in fearful and amazing ways they combine a primitive physical development with a suburb adapted, ad, adapt, adaptability. Three, in the sense group of muscles that run from head to tail. Provide most of the shark's motive power and they have taller tails and border and border fins than most fish and most fish. Their brains are tiny, cell, cell down over three inches long, even in large sharks, but they are so tough and durable that it also, also, that it also seeks they will never die. Wallers, Wallers tell of sharks that have been caught this disemboweled and thrown into the water. These gutted beasts then swim straight to whales, tied alongside the ship and began tearing at the flesh. Okay guys, that's it for today. See y'all next time on BRE. Bye!